City had hardly really worked Mendy in the Chelsea goal, not really looked like finding a way through until a kind of real crazy last five minutes of the, of the <laughs> first half. They got themselves in front with Raheem Sterling's goal, which again we can look at from many angles. So again, Chelsea still here, this press, this aggressive defensive stance that they have taken up so often. Now this time, just here, Rudiger here, I'll take that back just a little bit, Leon. Just to there, because again, there they're looking very comfortable. This player here, Rudiger knows at some point, I think he's my territory. I want to go and do that. But he's got to go at the right time to allow Christensen to maybe be in that position to make sure that he's covering for him. And in this little instance here, look, you can see Rudiger almost looking over his shoulder. Now Christensen's vulnerable there, Leon, isn't he? In yeah, that position. He is, he is for any ball into this channel. And you're right, he just goes a second or two too early, yeah. and then that exposes Christensen. But Chelsea will have known that. They will have known this kind of thing may happen against, against a, a team. When you're pressing, there is always the option that a team will put it in behind you and spin you. But from this position, we've, we've discussed this, Christensen should be fine. No, yeah. He doesn't need to dive in. He can stay behind yep. Jesus. He can force him into the corner, allow the players around him to, to reshuffle to and recover. get back and recover and get back into space. But he just makes a poor decision and it's cost yeah. him because of the injury that he ends up getting. He decides he thinks he can win it. And he dives in in that, sorry, and he, he dives in in that moment there. Yeah. Suddenly, suddenly he's exposed. Yeah. If I take it back there, if he just stays behind Jesus, and let's Jesus take the touch. He's going into that and position. Do you know, Leon, you make a good point. So in amongst all that great press, all that work that Chelsea must do during the week to get everybody in the right frame of mind to press and go and make sure they're on top of their opponent, one bad call, one bad decision in that team play, just one moment maybe where Christensen now, I'm sure he's watched this himself, hopefully he's going to be not out for not, not too long. If he just... Make, if he just allows, allows Jesus to have the ball there and just defend him and wait for help, then all of a sudden Chelsea Some, potentially... Sometimes as a defender, you've got to respect that a striker is, is favoured to get the ball. He doesn't. And not only did it cost, cost his team a goal, it could well have cost him yeah. the rest of this season. Jesus does great. It's not one of Sergio Aguero's <laughs> finest touches. But Raheem Sterling... has been a wonderful assist. He's been struggling for goals. And uh, so this is a welcome goal. For Raheem, that is that is a, a big goal for him. And I felt against the run of play, really, Manchester City had themselves a lead in the game. And it, and it actually prompted a really interesting kind of uh, three or four minutes after this, leading up to, leading up to half time. Because obviously Thomas Tuchel now knows that Christensen can't continue. He's got, yeah. his, he's got a hamstring problem. Why did Kurt Zuma not get on the field a goal's just been scored. How did they not get Zuma on before the City get a chance to, to, to well, get the penalty? At, at first, you think, because obviously there hasn't been enough time, things have happened so quickly to get him on the, on the pitch, but we've timed it. There's, from, from the ball hitting the back of the goal here, there's two minutes and 40 seconds before kickoff. Now, as a player, the moment he goes down injured, I would have been out the bench. I, didn't, I wouldn't have you needed the manager to tell me, see down at the bottom yet. Yeah. I wouldn't have needed the manager to tell me I would yeah. have been up and running. You can't quite see what's happened in that time, but I would say two minutes and 40 seconds is enough to get yourself a quick run up the line, get yourself stripped. He's obviously coming off. There was no way Christiansen, we could tell, anyone watching the game could tell Christiansen wasn't going to continue. Yeah. It just seemed to be too long to get changed. Then, he's getting, the then he's getting information about set pieces. This is one minute before half time, getting information that. You probably, made a good point. Yeah, he didn't need to do all that. He doesn't they? need it at that point against Manchester City. You get him on. It's a minute. He can be organised by Aspilicueta. Could have told him his job. Yeah. When he's on there, they've so, now missed their chance. Missed their chance to get him on the field. And then at this point, Leon, so the ball's just gone back to Mendy here. So now he's in control and he can, there's, he can do anything he wants to do with that <laughs> at this point. He can go as big as he likes. He can, obviously playing short is a bit of a risk when you're a man short. Oh, look, you're, you're away against to Man City. You've, You've just, just gone one down. You've just gone one down. You've got a man who's off the field. We need to get substitutes on. You cannot try and drop this 
into midfield, into somewhere there. You have got to go as big as you can. You've got to go, go. over the top, Correct. preferably out here, preferably close to the line, and hope that it gets headed out. Just in wait. which case you can make the substitution, or or Manchester City head it out. You get the set piece, yeah. the heart free, uh, throw in on the halfway line. Why he's trying to sort of clip this ball into Werner or, or Ziyech, which you wouldn't expect them to win the, yeah. the, the header anyway, and suddenly unorganised, centre-half down, still playing with the full-backs really spread. And as we saw against West Brom... Do you know, it's a bit, I was just about to say exactly the same thing. It's a against, really good yeah. point, that. It's a really good point. <clears throat> the last time they went down to 10 and they looked a bit of a mess mm. was against the Albion. Thomas Tuchel was now complaining bitterly that he hadn't had the job. In all fairness, Thomas, you had plenty long enough to get your substitute ready and to get him out there and to, uh, and to get him on the field. So, uh, so it was, uh, that, that was, that was uh, an interesting set of circumstances. But <laughs> they got away with it, as we know. And this was incredible. Leo I was sat up sat there, and when I saw Sergio Aguero, knowing what was at <laughs> stake for this pen... By the way, put this one in, you're two up. There's every chance the title's you won. Al you also equal the most goals ever scored by one player at, at one, one club. club in the Premier League, which was Wayne Rooney from yep. Manchester United. Yep. And I, get, I don't know if that would have weighed in the back of his mind and a penalty for someone as great as Sergio Aguero would have been too simple for that goal and he's going for something more extravagant, I don't know. But I was talking, talking with Leroy earlier about this Panenka-style penalty. I mean, let's have a look at it first. Let's have a little look at it. And, and this Panenka where you just dink it with your foot like that, just get a little bit of it and you hope the goalkeeper dives. In this day and age, Leon, now, where a goalkeeper must have one foot on the line, you can't... Do you remember years ago, yep. goalkeepers used to jump out and then leap to one side or the other? Can't do that now. You've got to stay with a foot on the line. I'm not so sure this penalty is ever on nowadays. No, you're probably right, because goalkeepers have to stay that second longer. They and can't just... commit early. But there was also a question of, is it a poor penalty? I actually think the technique is pretty decent. I think it's gone... Head height, centre Take of the goal. Again. I just think that he hasn't fooled Mendy enough. I think that in his run-up, in his approach, he hasn't done enough to, to fool the goalkeeper into making the dive, leaving the centre of the area, because, you know, we've seen other Penenka penalties. The Luckman one is the one that jumps to me. Man, that is a poor attempt at a Penenka. But that, I don't think it was too bad technically. I just yeah. think if you're going to do it, you've got to make sure the goalkeeper dives or you look silly. I, I, I was I was amazed when I when I when I saw him do it. I really, really was so uh, so amazed. Look, City have had their issues with penalties for a team so good and with so many brilliant technical players. They've not actually always been particularly good from the spot. We'll see this. Their record that since 1920, they've taken 20 of them. They've only scored 11 of them. I actually said to you just now, Liam, if you sent the goalkeeper up. I fancy he'd score. Oh, Out of 20 of them, I think he'd score 15. Well, there was serious talk of that. I think, was it earlier this season or last season, about maybe Edison coming up and taking the penalty kick, such as their inefficiency at them. But you look at the squad of players, them three players alone out of all of this squad, you'd expect that they'd score more penalty kicks than they have done. Um, when you're a technically gifted player, you'd think a 12-yard shot... It uh, should be easy, but I've got to be honest, I was hopeless at that So, are you in the school, just quickly, before we get up to Leroy, are you in the school of bad luck, Aguero, or bad decision? Bad decision. Uh, bad decision for the fact that he didn't do eno uh, enough to fool the goalkeeper. If you're going to go down the middle, I feel you've got to fool the goalkeeper. I don't think it was bad technical, uh, technically. I think it was a bad decision for the timing. He's yeah. got to go with a little bit more, a little bit more power and guile. 